My friends, my friends, first of all, thank you for the awesome birthday cards yesterday on my birthday. I really appreciated that. It felt, uh, I felt very loved yesterday, so thank you very much. That was awesome. Thank you. Okay, so secondly, secondly is this. Today is the feast day of Saint Andrew. Andrew. Do we have any Andrews in our school? If your name is Andrew, raise your hand. Do we have any Andrews? There's one Andrew back there. Happy feast day, Andrew. All right. So, Andrew is the brother of, someone tell me? Simon. Simon. He's the brother of Simon, who's also, whose name is changed to Peter, who becomes our first pope, right? Jesus calls Simon, says, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father, from now on, you are called Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, right? Peter becomes the first pope. But the person who brought Simon, Peter, to Jesus was Andrew, right? No Andrew, no Peter, which is pretty cool. That's why this uh, feast day is so important. Simon and Andrew were fishermen. They were casting their net into the sea. We just heard the story. Jesus comes along and he says to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. In other words, I'm going to radically change your life. You're, you're doing this incredibly important thing. You're You've got this great business, Andrew, Simon, you're good at fishing. I want to take you and I want to call you into something more. I want to call you into something more. The whole theme this whole year, we've been looking at it, it's Mary saying, do whatever he tells you. Do whatever he tells you. Right? Again, Mary at the wedding feast of Cana, she's talking to the Servants, do whatever he tells you. And it turns out when we do whatever he tells us, life becomes pretty amazing. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. When we do whatever he tells us, life becomes pretty adventurous. Like that's really when the adventure starts. That's really when the, just the amazing stuff starts rolling in. When you do what he begins to tell you, that's when life becomes pretty wild. I can tell you that from my own life. It's true. It's true. Andrew, today, we see that that's what he did. He says, come after me, I will make you fishers of men. They drop their nets, and then they go. They go. And the world was completely changed because of this. So we say today is the Feast of St. Andrew the Apostle. Andrew the Apostle. I want to look at that word apostle here for a second. I want to talk about this, because I think it's really important for us to understand. So the word apostle comes from the Greek word. You're going to learn some Greek this morning. Apostelain. Let me hear you say apostelain. Apostelain. It means to send or to be sent. To be an apostle is to be one who is sent. Right? The ones who are sent. So three questions. Three questions. Stay with me. First question, sent by whom? Second question, sent where? Third question, sent in order to do what? Sent by whom, sent where, and sent in order to do what? So this first question, who's the, who does the sending? Jesus, right? Jesus is the one who gathers these apostles. He gathers these disciples around him. He forms them. He teaches them. He invites them to see the way that he prays. They experience incredible things by being close to him, and then he sends them out. We say that all throughout the Gospels. He brings them in and then he sends them out two by two at different points to different towns and places to prepare for his arrival. And then at, the, at, and then at Pentecost, right, at, with the Holy Spirit comes down upon them, Jesus ascends back to his Father. He sends them into the world, right? So the apostles are sent by Jesus. And I just gave away the answer to the second question. Where are they sent to? Into what? The world. The whole world. They're sent to the four corners of the whole world. Like every part, every place. The apostles are sent out. And the last question, in order to do what? To proclaim the gospel. To tell people what they encountered. To tell people what they saw. Right? They're sent in order to speak, to preach, to teach, to open their mouths and to talk. To share the faith to express what they've experienced by being friends with this Jesus, to tell people about the resurrection, to tell people about this life, to tell people that like friendship with Jesus is better than friendship without Jesus. They're sent out into the world to tell people about him. 
to tell people about him. Because he's friends. Listen, he's the only hope the world has. And we are firmly convinced of this, that friendship with Jesus is better. Life with Christ is better. Friendship with Jesus is better. Relationship with Jesus makes your life better. That's the reason why we send people out. That's why we have missionaries. That's why we have evangelists, to tell people about this life. So now let me ask you this question. So you've got the 12 apostles. Are they the only ones that Jesus wanted to do this? Yes or no? no. Say it like you mean it. No. no. No, absolutely not. We say in the creed every single Sunday, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. One holy Catholic and apostolic church. Now that means a few things, but for us this morning, it means this. That the entire church, raise your hand if you're part of the church. Every single one of us are part of the church. The entire church has an apostolic mission. Every single one of us, by virtue of our baptism, are called to be apostles, to be sent out, to be sent forth. Like, at the end of Mass, there's three options that the priest or the deacon could say at the end of Mass. There's the, it's called the dismissal rite. The first is, go and announce the gospel of the Lord. The third is, go in peace, the Mass is ended. And the third is, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. What do all three of those have in common? What do they all start with? Go! They all start with the word go! At the end of Mass, the priest or the deacon is saying to us, go, get out of here. In other words, what you've received here, what you've heard here, what you've experienced here, like relationship with Jesus, encountering him in the Eucharist, what you've heard in the stories, what you've heard in the scriptures, now go and take that out into the world. Like that's, what, like, that's what is being commissioned to you at the end of Mass. You are called to be an apostle at the end of Mass. Here's what I want us to begin to see. I want you to really begin to see, like, this apostolic call on your life. Every single one of you has an apostolic call in your life. Like, to see every single Mass, to see it as an apostolic mission is, that's beginning. Like, when Mass ends, it's not like, whew, that's done. No, no. When Mass is over, the hard work is beginning. You're launched from here. Like this, when we get to the end of Mass, it's not like, oh yeah, cross the finish line. All right, now I'm done for a while. No, no, you've just arrived at the starting gate and now you are launched back out into your world. And I want you to begin thinking, I'm going to tell at least one person every single week something that I've experienced regarding Jesus, something that I've experienced about the faith. Something that I've experienced or heard or, or learned. Or, or I'm going to tell somebody something every single week. If you commit to that now, it will change the world. It will change the world. If you commit, I'm going to tell at least one person, at least one thing about Jesus, about my faith, every single week. It'll change the world. That's how this works, friends. That's how this works. I want to look at that first reading real quick from Paul to the Romans because this is so critical. He spells it out for us. He's talking about the state of the world and people who don't know Jesus, who don't have hope, who don't believe. He says, but how can they call on him who they've not believed? And how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone to preach, and how can people preach unless they are sent? You hear what Paul is saying? He's just spelling out the logic. Like, unless Christians are willing to go forth, unless we're willing to be sent, unless we're willing to open our mouths and to share our faith, people won't know about him. People won't know about him. And that would be really tragic because life with Christ is better. Friendship with Christ makes life better. So friends, you have an apostolic mission, just like St. Andrew. Just like St. Simon, just like St. Peter, just like John and the rest of them. You have an apostolic call. How that's going to look in your life one day, I don't know. Maybe some of you guys are, gonna, are called to be priests. God willing, I hope that's true. Maybe some of you ladies are called to be sisters or religious nuns. Maybe many of you are called to be amazing moms and dads, but every single one of us are called to be sent to share the faith. So let's close our eyes for a second. 
let's bring our hearts to a place of quiet and let's ask most especially for the Spirit's gift of courage. It takes great courage to be an apostle. It's easy to witness to the faith in a Catholic environment, in the church, in the school. It's hard to be an apostle out in the world. Let's ask St. Andrew to pray for us that we would have the gift of courage to do just that.